Well, hello and welcome to my shop. My name is George and I'm filming on location from my basement workshop in Chelsea, Quebec. Today I'm going to give you three good reasons for getting your blanks for a picture frame uh, by resawing. Uh, now this applies to picture frames where the wood is going to show through, not for picture frames that are, that are going to be painted in the end. So, what do I mean by resawing? Well, let's say you wanted to make a frame where the faces were fairly wide. Uh, in other words, a frame that's uh, quite common. Well, then you would take uh, a thick board and then resaw it this way into two thinner pieces. Open them up as if you're opening up a book, which is called book matching, and you would have the face is cut this way, you would assemble your frame like that. Or maybe you would like to uh, make something like a shadow box where the frame is deeper than it is uh, wide. Uh, in, in that case, you would take a board and then you would rip it down the middle. Again, opening it up like a book match, and now the show faces are the thin parts. So reason number one for resawing is that you'll get an excellent match in the grain. Uh, not just for the color of the grain, but also for the pattern. Now that's not the only way to get a good match. You could take a long board and cut it into four pieces, one after uh, another, uh, and still get a pretty good match in, um, in color. But stay tuned for reason number two. So the next scene shows you how to cut the four pieces from the two that you've already sawn apart. And uh, it applies uh, not just for rectangular frames like 8x10, 11x14, but also if you're planning to make a square frame. And it gets at reason number two. Now, let me show you that in metric, reason number two. And that has to do with how the grain runs into the corners. And so you end up getting uh, a corner uh, where the grain comes in and meets in a continuous way. You don't get a dramatically different grain pattern in any of the four corners. Now I did mention that I wanted the frame to be um, to have a narrow face compared to its uh, depth. So ripping the original board down the middle made a lot of sense and then Flipping the sides up this way to create the uh, frame was the plan. Now, the original board was uh, jointed, planed, uh, and then ripped to width. And then, to cut off the pieces that I needed, I put the uh, short end uh, at, at one end of the uh, ripped board and the other one put it offset over here. So the short pieces are offset and of course that means the long pieces are offset too. Uh, so why do it that way? That seems like a pain in the neck for no good reason. But here's why. When uh, the board gets uh, ripped down the middle you'll get the same pattern of grain on the inside. So when you turn it up this way, and this way, that way, and that way, that's analogous to showing a book matched face. Now, <clears throat> when these ends come together, you can see that there's grain continuity. No problem seeing that. The same for these two. But because these faces are book matched, if you will, when this corner comes together, it also will seem to have been book matched. And 
Same goes for the other end of things. So this is a way of um, getting uh, not quite a book matched look, but there won't be any jarring changes of grain at the corners if you lay it out this way. So that's why I went to the trouble uh, of separating the two lengths at different places. Right then, are you ready for reason number three? What I'm going to do is bring you in close to this picture frame and I'll spin it around and what I want you to pay attention to is the grain pattern all along the outside perimeter. And I want you to make a note of whether the grain seems to be consistently rising or consistently falling or being all over the place. Okay, so I'm giving the frame a little bit of a spin around and uh, I hope that you're going to notice that as we go our way around the frame, the grain is consistently going in one direction. Maybe you want to call it rising or maybe you want to call it falling, but whatever you call it, it's doing the same thing all the way around. And the big advantage to that, reason number three, is that when it comes time to leveling the places where the frame meets, to do any kind of hand planing around a corner, you're going to greatly reduce the chances of tear out because you're not going to get a situation where it's easy to plane for one of the sides and then you run into planing against the grain in the next side. Uh, you'll be able to just consistently go around the frame with a hand plane and clean up all of the corners. So that's my big reason number three. My eyeglasses are on. Okay, well that's it uh, from me for today. Uh, I hope you found the uh, video something interesting or maybe useful. And uh, hang on a second, let me just consult my teleprompter. Oh yeah. Make some time for whatever your passion is, and if you can, share it.